And away we go. It is another nightcap brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken right here on BearcatJournal.com. Visit www.galacticfriedchicken.com. Download the app for Android, iPhone, everything Galactic. Get down to Dayton, Kentucky. Tell them to pump it up. Save yourself 15%. And, and there's a there's a new menu item, Aaron. Have you seen? There's a new menu item at Galactic Fried Chicken. Go on. They're called Little Dippers. Ooh, I did like, see that. I scrolled past that tweet today. Yeah, they're like they're like you know miniature bite size style chicken tendies. So not quite nuggets, like not nugget, but like kind of cut in half or cut in quarters chicken tenders, and you little you little dip them in the in the sauce. They're a little I, more handheld. I think they're still bigger than anything Chick Fil A offers on their menu. Oh, absolutely, including the chicken sandwiches, probably. <laughs> So get down, try the little dippers. They they've been, for this week. They've increased the order from six to eight. Uh, so make sure you get down. Like I said, tell them to pump it up. Save yourself fifteen percent. All right, let's get going. Um, the bye week carries on. Don't mind. I know I'll take heat for this. Don't mind my Florida shirt. I, I I've got like eight different random home field apparel shirts now that just kind of work through my rotation of uh sitting in the hospital shirts i was gonna say you're you're working on hospitals hospital schedule right now so yeah laundry might take a little bit of a back seat i've got laundry in as we speak for like the first time in 10 days um so yeah um but it's uh it's bye week and by week, when especially when it falls right around here, um, good to kind of enter into the beginning of the basketball conversation. We are roughly a month, <clears throat> less than a month from the start of the season. Uh, I believe 27 days from the first game, which, yeah, um, there are a couple super secret scrimmages coming up over the next couple weeks. Uh, one of them close to, well, it won't be played close to you, but, uh, one of them against a team very close to where you're located right now. Did you see Jeff Goodman put out the, not so the list out the not so secret scrimmage, yeah. the not so secret, super secret scrimmage list. They're playing Ohio U and Purdue. I didn't check to see who was on the list, but I just saw he put that out. Yeah. They're playing Ohio U. I think here. Or it might be it might be in a neutral site somewhere. Uh, and then they're playing Purdue and Indy. So I don't know how much we're gonna get, as is the case every year, uh, on details. But those are the secret scrimmages. We're less than a month away from the start of the season. Media Days starts tomorrow for AAC basketball. Uh, they are again, uh, much like football, doing these on Zoom, um, because they're cheap asses. <laughs> So, I as long if, if we get Kelly home tomorrow, UC's media availability is Thursday, and I believe women start at ten, and then the men follow. <coughs> if um, as long as as we get her home, um, I should be good to go for Thursday. Uh, if not, we'll just have to see kind of where things are. At. Winging but, it. Um, that's what we always do, Aaron. We're winging it. Well, uh, we do have Chad Dollar coming on tomorrow, yeah? Yeah, that was I was going to tease that later, but you can go ahead and you know, jump the gun on that if you'd like. Oh. Mr. Executive Producer. So, well, I mean, eh. Chad least, Dollar will be joining us on the BCJ podcast tomorrow. At night. least people know and they can tune in now. Yeah. Um, so look forward to that. Uh, but tonight, today, earlier today, or at least I saw it earlier today, uh, CBS Sports did their American Athletic Conference uh, prediction and write-up for the season. Um, Memphis, or Houston won, obviously. Memphis 2, uh, Cincinnati 3. They believe Tulane will be uh, right on the heels of the Bearcats. Uh, there were a couple of guys that picked Tulane 3rd, Cincinnati 4th. Um, one guy picked Temple fourth and Tulane fifth. And Temple, we have they're like it's all it's pretty much all transfers. Like we have no idea whether Temple's gonna be good or not. Has there been well, let's let's 
Let's dial back for a minute. Um, those are the rankings. Preseason player of the year, Marcus Sasser. Four more players to watch. Kendrick Davis, Jamal Shedd, Jalen Cook. Kendrick Davis, obviously, at, at, now at Memphis, used to be at uh, SMU. Shed at Houston, uh, Jalen Cook, and then Khalif Battle, um, who was, you know, the 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 best player for Temple, but he only played in seven games um, last year. He was a big time scorer, scored about twenty two points a game. There, there's a name missing from that list, Aaron, and there's a name missing from the scouting report of Cincinnati. Let's read you the scouting report of Cincinnati. David Julius is the focal point of a really talented returning cast of characters for Coach Wes Miller in his second season with the Bearcats. Cincinnati should have a much improved defense and the continuity of a program that's been in constant turnover the last few few years should help them make a leap back near the top of the league standings. Cincinnati may still be a year away from totally revamping itself. It's working on a top 20 recruiting class for 2023. But the cohesiveness and experience of this unit warrant serious respect as they look to return to old glory. There's no mention of Landers Nolly. Not anywhere until you scroll even further past all the team by team breakdown and you get past the most overrated team being Temple and the most underrated team being Cincinnati where they read, uh, despite stumbling to the finish line with eight losses in his last 10 games, no more like face planting on the asphalt and army crawling to the finish line. Optimism surrounding Cincinnati's prospects in year two under Wes Miller are sky high. The team brings back most of its core from a squad that made major strides from the season prior. With six of its top seven scorers returning, including star David DeJulius, and a complimentary incoming class led by Memphis transfer Landers Nolly, the Bearcats have the goods to go from bottom half of the league standings too challenging for the number two spot behind Houston and very possibly a bid to the big dance to boot. All things that I think are fair, except for again, making Landers Nolly sound like a complimentary, like a throw in, like a throw in two years ago, Landers Nolly was first team, all American athletic conference. First team. And now, like when they in the Memphis thing, here's the the Memphis expert or excerpt, uh, part of it. This team has holes to plug. It lost Jalen Duran, Lester Quinones, Amani Bates, and other producers. I like where they said that they have an exciting guard to build on that Penny Hardaway has never had before. Uh, how quickly we forget later in the in that same excerpt, Amani Bates. Well, Bates is a... He was an exciting guard to build around when they got him. It's not a guard. People thought he was... Well, it's not a guard. I mean, I've watched Imani. He's a small forward at best. Um, But Tyler Harris was an exciting guard. Penny just didn't use him right. Like, I... Also, and, and maybe my view is distorted a bit because I don't... Has Kendrick Davis ever played well against Cincinnati? If he has, it's been few and far between times that they've played. Cincinnati's handled him pretty well. Is Memphis ever going to face sanctions? No. No. That that, that ruling that, already um, came down. Is that done like, over with? I I don't Yeah. They it was it basically was a slap on the wrist. Like, hmm. don't do that. Um I if Memphis is the set if, if this is true and Memphis is what people think is the second best team in this conference. I think Cincinnati's going to finish second. I I guess I'm just, I've seen Memphis shit the bed enough times with really good rosters. Right. That I'm, I'm just, I'm not scared of them, especially if we're putting together the team that I think we've put together for this season. I, I, my thing is my, my problem is more with this article. Like, just acting like Landers Nolly was like, you know, the eighth guy off the, well, you know, Cincinnati added the eighth guy off the bench for Memphis. They completely misused Landers Nolly last year. Well, the year before he was first team all conference. Ace in the hole. When you play Memphis this year as Cincinnati, you have Landers Nolly who knows the entire Memphis playbook. Yeah. I, I, that doesn't matter a ton. Like, 
now they've got synergy. Everybody knows everybody's playbook. Like if you really, I would love for fans to see how this works. If you sit close enough, the teams with good coaching staffs are calling out the opposing team's plays as they're running down the floor. They are telling their defense, this is what they're going to run. Like there are no secrets anymore in college basketball. It's wild. Yeah, it's just with 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 the video technology, it's easy, like because synergy like the synergy breaks down everything. This is what happens when this guy has the ball. This is what happens when this guy is in pick and run. This is what happens when this guy's in ISO. And you just click. Okay, I want to see all of the plays where he's in pick and roll. I want to see all the plays where he's an ISO. I want to see all the plays where he's like a runner, a baseline runner. And it just, boom, pulls isn't it that up. What, there you isn't go. that what Berg watches to break stuff yeah, down? Yeah, that's what he watches, yeah. That's what I thought. That's I crazy. don't know if he has the full, like, coach's version or if he has more of, like, a watered down. But, like, and that's, like, what video coordinators do. They, they sync all that stuff up. Here's what they look like against man-to-man. Here's what they look like against zone. Like, there's no secrets anymore. My point is, if you're going to write about the American Athletic Conference, there's only so many guys in the league that have been first team all conference. Yeah. Landers Nolly is one of those guys, and I think deserves more than a passing mention is like, oh, yeah, we forgot. They, they got him from Memphis hanging out on the back of their roster. That ain't it. No. But, but um, <laughs> obviously, Houston's going to be a monster. Uh, not yeah. only did they have, you know, basically the number one and the number three player in the conference, according to CBS, they also have the top two freshmen in the conference, according to, to CBS. Aren't they preseason now, number number three in yeah, the country? Yeah. Now, Jarris Walker. <laughs> Should I pull up a picture? I've seen a picture. He's terrifying. Um, he is, how's he only a four? What do you mean? How tall is he? I know he's six. Now he's not super tall. Um, just built like a brick shit house. Oh, he is a monster of a human. Uh, I love when we do things like this and we just don't talk for yeah. Seconds. Well, that's why we don't put this in the podcast form. Yeah, that's it. That's him in high school before a college strength and conditioning program. He's it's a very strong young man. Um, they have him as as the top freshman, and then um, Terrence Archino. Who I believe is the son of Harold the Show Archino. If you're a if you're a college basketball junkie, um, but Houston is the the preemptive predominant favorite. Now the nice thing about Houston for me, Aaron, is two or three times a year they poop down their leg. So if you're looking to get in the tournament, you will have a chance a time or two to catch Houston sleeping. And guess what? Cincinnati hasn't exactly been much of a threat to the Cougars to the point where the Cougars are going to be on high alert when Cincinnati, uh, when they come to Cincinnati or, or Cincinnati goes to Houston. So maybe you sneak up on them. Um, maybe. But look, I, I, I don't think there's many surprises in this league. I, I don't know, like, I think Tulane is going to be very good. Everybody knows I'm a big Ron Hunter guy. Um, love Ron. Think he's hilarious. I think he is is doing what I thought he would do at Tulane after having some time to build a foundation. I'm not to the point I'm buying Temple. Obviously, Khalif Battle playing a full season is going to, you know, has a chance to be very good. But I haven't seen anything that tells me Aaron McKee's a good coach. Have you? I mean, Temple's actually being talked about. That's, that's yeah, but that's because of battle. I'm saying when I've watched him coach at Temple, 
since he's been the coach at Temple. I haven't he, he hasn't done much to make me think that's a you know a, a, a top half of the league coaching situation. UCF sixth. Um their top three scorers are gone. They do have CJ Walker, but he's not like he's not a guy that's gonna you just throw him the ball and he gets you buckets. He's a crazy athlete, he's gonna have big dunks, but uh, you know, Wichita State seventh, South Florida eighth. Uh, SMU 9th, Tulsa 10th, East Carolina 11th. You have new coaches at SMU, Tulsa, and East Carolina. Uh, Brian Gregory is still at South Florida, so, you know. Um, Wichita State, the, the roundhouse is uh, Fifth Third Arena West. Um, yep. I We did when the, when the schedule came out. We, we did. did the, we did the mental gymnastics on – where we thought this team was going to be 23 to 25 wins is, is what we thought. As I'm starting to dig into the American conference, I, I, I really am starting to believe this team could finish second in the league. Feeling better and better about what we talked about then. Yeah. We were very bullish on what we thought their, their final record would be. And bear agrees. Um, that's about all I got. We'll see you tomorrow night. It's the nightcap. Brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken. Lil Dippers. Right here on BearcatJournal.com. See it.